。啊，我们呃现在。So now we are、uh, we are about to start our afternoon、uh, forum session. So we have、uh, different languages. We have、uh, English from、uh, Russian, and also we have Chinese、uh, languages. If you are now so accustomed to the multi languages, so we do have our、uh, simultaneous、uh, translation. So you can、uh, switch to、uh, different channels for different languages. <coughs> so I'm wondering which channel is for Russian. So、uh, channel four for Russian, number four. So for this、uh, session, we、we'll、talk about uh, China's uh, new vision for industrial、uh, cooperation. So we'll start this、uh, session. So what kind of、uh, topic we have? It relates to、uh, globalization, as well as the upgrading and the cooperation of our industrial value chain. So for the process of、uh, globalization. About、uh, 30 years ago, so it's a big uh, uh, buzzword. So today, 30 years、uh, later, so the process of、uh, globalization we all have、uh, witnessed. So this is at a high level of、uh, development. So at this moment, so we talk about our China's、uh, industries. So it's、uh, industrial cooperation. Actually, it's、uh, industrial uh, capacity uh, cooperation. So what does it mean? And what is our uh, uh, objectives? So, what will be the future like? So, the first uh, uh, speaker is from our Minister Xu from our National uh, uh, Development and Reform uh, Commission (NDRC). So, in our minds, maybe it's not so clear concerning the cooperation in the China's uh, industrial uh, capacity. Now, I'll hand over the floor to our Minister Xu. So、uh, thank you so much, our operator, our moderators, as well all the audiences, and also our distinguished guests. So this、uh, WEF, our theme is to、uh, describe the new、uh, blueprint of the grow of the growth. So this is a lot of、uh, concerns of the people. So today's uh, uh, forum. So we'll talk about our cooperation in international industrial capacity and equipment. So with a few minutes, I will give you a brief introduction. So the first one concerning the cooperation of industrial capacity and equipment. So China is really、uh, follows the trend of the industrial division and development around the world. As we know, in each、uh, industrial revolution in our history. Some of the economies or the industrial system will、uh, witness a rapid、uh, development, and also an increase of their economic、uh, power, and also it、uh, brought about the in-depth、uh, adjustment and the destruction of our industries in history, and also some of the economies really、uh, seized、uh, those opportunities. Try to uh, uh, bridge the gap of their infrastructures development to strengthen their own industrial、uh, system to improve the livelihood and the standards of their people. From the perspective of China's economy, we have about 30 years of reform and opening up. So China really、uh, sees this opportunity of the industrial restructuring and also the division, and、uh, we have deeply、uh, involved in the global economy in China. So we both、uh, introduced, and also we also go、uh, global. So we have quite、uh, complete and comprehensive、uh, systems, and also very rich、uh, capacities in the industries. So with、uh, today's、uh, development of our economy, so China cannot uh, fully uh, rely on the export of our consuming、uh, products to increase our、uh, export、uh, demand. So we try to、uh, move from the export of the consumer products into a kind of a cooperation into the industrial capacity to really expand our export. So that really aligns with this、uh, big trend around the globe. So this is、uh, one point. Second point. So the in international industrial capacity and the equipment、uh, cooperation. 
really uh, facilitates the recovery of the world economy. So we have the financial crisis around the year 07. So uh, seven years have passed. So up to now, we have not uh, uh, fully recovered and cannot really uh, overcome those uh, uh, aftermath or uh, effect of uh, financial crisis. So we always uh, have a question. So what is the new uh, growth engine for the recovery of the global economies after crisis? So China as the second largest uh, economy. So in the past uh, few years, we always uh, maintain a two-digit uh, growth. In the past uh, two years, it's also around 7% uh, GDP uh, growth. So the fundamentals of our economy is quite uh, healthy. And also, our contribution rate to the world economy is around 30% from China. So now China, we have more than 200 types of products rank very high around the world. We have a very full function systems. We have a very big introduction industrial capacity. So uh, they are not uh, backward, they are quite uh, excellent. So China has to uh, seize this opportunity to uh, push uh, forward the cooperation in the industrial capacity and the equipment around the world. How about the developed economies for their industries themselves? They have to uh, witness the transformation and also upgrading. So they have very advanced technology and management. And also they have very uh, strong uh, uh, financing uh, basis. So what is the problem with the developed countries? They have a very uh, high cost. So how about the emerging countries or the developing countries? They try to uh, push forward the industrialization and the urbanization. They need a large amount of uh, infrastructure and also very uh, comprehensive uh, industrial uh, systems. China do have this uh, capability and uh, advantages. And also the developing countries, they also have the uh, advantages of the advanced uh, management and also the uh, growth. They also have a bigger market and also the opportunities. If we integrate those uh, three factors uh, together, so on a larger scale, we can uh, deeply push forward the cooperation internationally in terms of the industrial capacity and equipment to uh, add uh, new drivers for the recovery of the global economy. This is my second point. Thirdly, so our China's uh, pushing forward of the cooperation is uh, based on the mutual uh, uh, assistance and also a mutual uh, cooperation and establishment. So with the developed countries and developing countries, we need our mutual uh, discussion or consulting and we can enjoy the benefit mutually. So. We will give a full uh, consideration so the uh, recipient countries, their requirement and also their concerns. So mainly, we go through our investment for the local uh, factories or the building of the infrastructure, the assembly lines, and also the industrial uh, value chain, and also the uh, industry uh, concentration areas in order to implement this uh, uh, international cooperation. So how about our principles as uh, international practice, the commercial practice, the uh, business operation and uh, guided by the local government. So uh, the businesses, we have the following uh, channels. All it's uh, direct investment or technology uh, cooperation. And also we have uh, other uh, very rich uh, methods of uh, cooperation. So how do we push forward? such a cooperation, at least in four areas we have to uh, do. The first one is the setup of the cooperation mechanism. It's a country to country or business to business. We need such a, a mechanism. Secondly, we need a framework or solutions. So in the recent one year, two year or three years. So in this uh, cooperation, what should we do and how to do it? Thirdly, we need a quite a clear a uh, detailed list of the items, including a big project, that is the industrial park or the uh, industry uh, concentrated areas. So we have uh, two parts. So the first one is uh, our result 
our uh, performance, another one is a long-term uh, detailed uh, list. And uh, also, fourthly, we need our arrangement of uh, financing. So the uh, capital and the finance is very important for the cooperation in the industrial capacity. We it of the Chinese uh, standard or Chinese uh, equipment and Chinese uh, uh, technology equipment, of course, we will give them the support. So with all those uh, approaches, the government, including the central government and the local government, so, so we can uh, sign the uh, agreement on this uh, mechanism of uh, cooperation. Our businesses and organizations can also use this uh, approach to set up a mechanism with these other parties for cooperation. We have both uh, bilateral, it's a one country to one country, one region to one region. And also, we can have a three parties mechanism. So already with uh, France, so we are discussing to cooperate to uh, develop the third party market for the nuclear power and also the energy and also the uh, railway uh, transportation. So we already decided at the beginning of uh, next year in Dakar, so we will uh, organize uh, China, France, and also with the uh, Dakar government, a uh, three parties uh, meeting to uh, jointly develop the third party countries uh, market. And also we welcome the multilateral or international organizations or its uh, financial institutions or local uh, institutions to be uh, involved. Those are my three uh, comments. So for this, uh, 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 for that meeting was held in Northeast China. I mean, this uh, uh, forum is in uh, Northeast China, especially for Liaoning province and Dalian, they have uh, four major areas. They have uh, meteorology and uh, steel and also the equipment manufacturing. So those are the basis of our industry for our cooperation. And also I believe for the participants, we do have some um, from the businesses, so we are quite willing to work with those uh, businesses. We can have an uh, uh, organization to organize its cooperation for the joint development. So that's my uh, brief account. Okay, thank you so much. So I have a very uh, quick question. So uh, Minister Xu uh, said, so in terms of the financing and the government uh, cooperation, we have the state-owned enterprise and the private enterprises. So for the capacity uh, export, so how do you arrange the uh, finance, whether it's on a equal basis for both uh, SOE for our uh, private companies, will have the same uh, treatment and the same approaches. So in our country, our state-owned enterprise or the central government enterprises or the private enterprises, so for the government, treat all those enterprises uh, equally on an equal footing. If our SOE, so the policies they enjoyed, could uh, apply or could be effective for the private enterprises. Okay, thank you so much. So I forget there is a rule for this kind of a forum. So our panel, we have only one hour. So for further on, so maybe uh, at the end of this uh, one hour, so we might have some time for the Q&A from the audience. So about uh, five to six minutes. So we can uh, finish our uh, short comments. The second uh, panelist from uh, Russian Federation, the vice uh, uh, premier, Tutinov. So as we know, for Mr. Tutinov is in charge of the Far East uh, region, the vice uh, premier. So uh, two days ago, So in a Frasdio's talk, they have a Far East uh, uh, forum to talk about uh, the project in Siberia. So it's a, a free uh, trade, or we call it a special uh, economic zone. So uh, President Putin also attended that uh, uh, forum. After the military parade in Beijing, Mr. Putin flew back to the event, and in China, a lot of entrepreneurs were also there, led by our Vice Premier Wang Yang. So I would like to hear from you, Mr. What's your take on the 
economic zone and also Russian cooperation with China in terms of economy? Please. First of all, I'm not quite sure about China's way of participating the economic growth and it's up to, up to the decision makers of the two countries and more specifically I would like to give you a picture of the Far East and Russia. Nowadays, what is the difference compared to the past? First of all, Russia and Far East boast abundant resources. We have fresh water resources in Asia Pacific, 30% of fresh water and also gold, biotechnology, natural gas, etc. Diamonds. At the same time, we are quite clear that for a very long period of time, we haven't taken advantage of all these resources. Back in 2013, Russian president gave the state of the affairs report and he said Far East development should be the focus and now pre present with us we have the Minister of Development from Russia. We are faced with some di difficulties and challenges such as administration the complications, and also we are in lack of preferential treatments and also the infrastructure. That's why we are so clear nowadays that in this year for our economic mechanism, we have the free port and also the fundraising as well as other mechanisms and measures. We also have some taxation preferential treatment such as the income tax, uh, VAT, land tax. For all these taxes, in the past it was 0%. And for some other taxes, there are also going to be huge cuts and also we have simplified all those formalities and procedures such as the custom clearance. In this way, we are laying the great foundation for the economic development zone. This basic structure will give the green card to enterprises. You can have the one-stop services all those enterprises can, through the internet, participate in the Russian economic development zone. That is our recent work. And in terms of infrastructure, for sure, we are building some projects. Our government has set aside a lot of funds for us. And for those economic zones, we have our own way of fundraising. This year, we have already got $2.7 billion USD to support all those projects. And uh, I, I'm not only paying lip lip services. I would like to do some really solid work and uh, time is very important and for Russia and Far East, the return rate of the investment in Russia and Far East will be 110 percent and the forum you just mentioned, actually we had signed 20 billion USDs worth of contracts and agreements. And 
We still have great potential for development. As we all know, we are going to hold the second forum, which is a huge leap forward for us. Altogether, we have 5,000 guests. Actually, the list is only 1,000 guests. This shows how popular our forum was. OK, thank you very much. As I listen to your presentation, and you have this kind of economic zones and also your measures, actually, this is quite similar to what we have done back in 20 and 30 years ago. So we are quite familiar with this. Now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Zhou from Liaoning province. As I go through your CV, actually, you are a PhD of economics. So you're quite an expert on this era. And from the development of Liaoning province, as we all know, in northeast part of China, at the very beginning of the founding of New China, it's the belt of heavy industries. And uh, now 60 years have passed away because of the industrial upgrading and some other reasons in this year and also in the past few years. The GDP growth in the north past, northeast part of China lagged behind the average of GDP growth in China. So from the perspective of Liaoning province or the northeast part of China, how to go through the transition, how to boost the development momentum in your province? Mr. Zhou. Dear guests, first of all, I I'm very glad to see all of you in Dalian to participate in this session at the annual meeting of the New Champions 2015. As the MC pointed out, Liaoning province is actually very important in terms of the heavy industry in China, and we have an array of industries, primary industries. However, we have those petrol, chemical industries with a large proportion. Just as President Xi Jinping mentioned, we have those primary industries which need to be upgraded. All these challenges and difficulties showcased that we need to restructure all these industries. However, to restructure takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. Restructuring and uh, growth rate sometimes have conflicts with each other. So when we upgrade those traditional industries, we need to add up the information-based technologies. At the same time, we need to speed up high-tech industries. And maybe you have already read from the newspapers about the economic data. In Liaoning province, the aggregate is still among the top 10. However, the growth rate actually is among the bottom once. So that means we have to restructure and focus on doing this. Globally, we have upgrading and improving the structures of economies and industries. This is more true this is truer in Liaoning province because in Liaoning province we had the plant economy at the very beginning of the founding of New China. And uh, in last century, we also have the dual track mechanism of the pricing. So in Liaoning province, actually, we 
sold all those kind of products according to the pricing made by the government instead of market oriented. So this kind of mechanism needs to be upgraded and changed. And we need to change the functions and roles of both government and the enterprises. How to boost Liaoning province economy? We are faced with huge challenges. However, we still have a very good foundation with great speed of the technological growth. And we also have really ex expertise labor. We have those heavy machine manufacturing industry with a proportion of 31% in a whole primary industry. After several years of development, some industries in Liaoning province, including mining, infrastructure, high voltage machinery, and also marine operation machineries, and uh, all these have the cutting edge technologies with them. And a lot of enterprises in Liaoning are the leaders in their own industries. So we have very good foundation. We have a promising future. So in terms of the international cooperation, this is also one way and also the motivation for us to restructure our economy. We need to learn from others from the perspective of the investors and also the recipients. This is a win-win solution. Supported by NDRC, in recent years, we have been conducting the Going Global strategy. And we also have 431 projects overseas with an investment of 3.6 billion USD. Some Liaoning enterprises have invested in other countries, like the investment in India worth of 160 million USD. And uh, Shenyang Group also acquired a company from Germany in Berlin to attract those foreign talents. So the international cooperation not only includes going global, but also includes attracting foreign talents. This is a very good driver for our economic restructuring. So we are quite confident about the Liaoning province's economic development. We have to stick to the principle of reform and opening up technological R&D innovation and institutional innovation, I believe Liaoning will contribute to the China's economy and world economy at large. So as we can see, the first uh, three uh, panelists, so they are from uh, uh, government, they are officials. So we still have another two from uh, foreign countries. One is our local uh, Chinese uh, enterprise. So from the enterprise or business perspective, for those uh, cooperation in the industrial uh, capacity from your respective uh, uh, cases, point of view, so what uh, can you share with us? Uh, American Lominum Franklin. So, why, oh. yes. why don't you... I mean, uh, your own cases, I mean, right. uh, as a manufacturing capacity, uh, cooperation to create a win-win situation. Well, I think what uh, China... I think what China is doing now is to create its own economy. 你再来去进行一些转型改变的时候呢，你一般有两个杠杆去做，一个杠杆呢，一个要去进行创新。
，你要去增长是通过创新增长。第二点呢，想要做什么呢？来去改改组这个结构，把一些老的想法呢。这样的一些进行这样一些这个摆脱，然后呢，有把这些呃发掘一些新的事情出来，摆脱一些老东西。我们这次讨论是关于涉及到合作，下面来去讲一下关于创创新这方面呢。我想这个合作呢，都是涉及到一些跨国的，然后这样一些这个创新，对于中国的崛起，在过去啊那个四十年当中是非常有作用的，还会继续下去的。当然有这样一些知识啊，有一些创新啊。有一些非常好的一些最佳的一些做法，这些企业我们在这个中国外部都是拥有的。比如说呢，我们把我们这样一些 ，light meeting 是非常重要的，带进来。就是说一些销售汽车呀，在全球来说，在美国过去四十年当中呢。然后从这样一些这个金属变成一些铝合金呢，然后能够节省很多一些重量，降低很多重量，节省很多一些钢材，也能够节省很多一些燃料。然后这里边呢，我们可以把这种技术带到中国来，降低这种重量。我们可以能够有一个跟那个比亚迪、比亚迪有这样一些合作，它是叫这个叫做是铝合金的一种电动汽车，这样一些这个大巴车。然后呢，可以能够来去节省百分之四十的这样一些这个重量，就跟那个钢材相比，这是非常大的一件事情。还有这个 c o m a c 这是非常好的一个中国的公司，它可以来去建这个 C 9 1 9 9 9这样一些这个大飞机，这样一些有很多一些创新是需要的。我们有很多一些朋友，来自于这个铝制品行业到钛合金行业。到这个镍合金，还有一些这个发动机啊等等，我们为什么说这个 c o m a c 有很长时间的非常好的这样一个合作伙伴？这都是一些例子。我还想呢，有一点呢，你们两位都提到了，包括这个全主任和这个省长这样一种概念。就是呢，我们如何来去利用中国非常好这样一些人才，这种教育程度，而且呢是这个提高的很快。中国的文化呢是这样一种创业的文化，年轻的中国人呢，你在全球都看到，他们要来去创办自己的企业。我们如何来保证呢？其中更多的能能实现这种成功。我们前面也就提到过的，把这样一些这个。呃，建立一种文化并不太容易。我们要来去建立这样一个集群的一个文化。我的一个认为，最大所缺少的环节呢，就刚才这个陈主任说的，就是这个融资方面。融资这一部分呢，就是让人们能够来去获得这样一些资本，就是在这个早期能够获得有这样的一个竞争是优势。我也知道有很多的省都在努力来鼓励人们。能够有一些像孵化器啊，能够自己创业呀、啊，这都是我说的这种创新。创新能够想很多很多，但是最后一点呢，我也认为呢，这样一些公司一些做法，我们感到非常自豪。我们是成为一个领导者，关于这样一些安全、一些环保等等啊，我们的理念来保证呢，在我们环境里不得伤害任何人。我们就把这个环境呢变成一个更好的这样一个环境。我们知道中国呢还没有达到这一点，这就是一方面呢。我们可以能够相互学习，能够把我们的经济的发展，跟那一些生态的发展能够结合在一起，这些做法。第二点呢，关于我们这个产业结构的这个重组，我们应该来去相互的合作。你可以能够把这些老地方腾出来，为新的做好这样一些这个发展，这都是我们继续下去的。很遗憾呢，这方面呢。在我们的这产业，就是这个铝制品的行业，这里边还有很多工作要去做，还是需要进一步来去发展。我们说一吨的铝在中国生产的，它能够带来这个两倍的让一些二氧化碳，来去能够在这个外部来说，我们现在的任务就是怎么在这样一些企业能够发展一些作用。我们是非常这种开放的，而继续要开始开放的，能够来帮助中国的企业能够来走向世界。并不是说要把所有东西放在中国生产，有很多地方可以在中国生产是应该的。大家来知道呢，你们要来有更高的一些，呃，就是说这个摆脱一些老的这些生产这种模式的这个空间。所以有的时候呢，就是呢一个呢，就是要来去改革、呃、国有企业。我们已经讲了很长时间了，这是一个正确的一个途径，但是这个进展是非常缓慢的。这个国企的改革，我要鼓励你们这样一些这个政府部门呢，能够继续下去，也许呢，能够来去进行的速度更快一些。第二点呢，就是说我们关于这种培训的管理，我们也看到呢，中国的一些领导者
，说不，这些企业的领导者他们不太满意在这个中国以外来去进行他那些业务的开展。这里边呢，并不是是一些这个职能上的东西，不是不说他们不能讲英文，因为你可以带你自己翻译去任何地方。更多的呢，就是能够来去来怎么面对这个外部世界，就是你们跟这个外部的一些公司来去怎么进行合作。这都可以能够来去学习，然后就是进一步来去这个学习。我想呢，中国的这些在上海的学校呢，他们可能需要更长的一些时间。但我鼓励你们来去加速这样的一些这个进程，这是一个障碍。里边有很多的机遇，对一些跨国企业，我们非常开放的。但今时呢，会有这样一些这种障碍，影响这样一些发展。您讲到这儿吧。Of、uh, joint ventures in China, I mean. Well,、uh, <laughs> we had or you have we,、uh, had, your, we, we have six facilities in China, right? And they are really around the the, the industries that I mentioned. Automotive plays a big role.、Um, uh, aerospace plays plays a big big role. We have、uh, some stuff for the marine, marine marine market, you know. So the commercial transportation plays plays a role. In regards to cooperations, the interesting thing is we had a very very strong cooperation with two、uh, companies here, Shinalco as well as CPI. Right, but that's where my last point came in. I mean,、uh, both are undergoing transformations by themselves, and and that's、uh, certainly not making it very easy.、Uh, I am extremely hopeful with what I've just read in the last weeks in regards to what's going on there. That this will now, I mean, be accelerated. No, I mean,、uh, why I'm asking your question is that I mean,、uh, you you were saying、uh, the SOE reform is、yes. uh, slow. Uh, why? <laughs> Why did you get that impression? I mean,、uh, it, it was、uh, slow.、Uh, well, because I think that from the start on, we have been talking about、uh, for two years now.、Uh, the discussion is let's consolidate the SOEs. That ma- let's make them faster. And I totally believe in that. Totally believe in that. But look, I mean, if China has had the speed, right, in the last 40 years, right, that it takes this long. To get that done, we would not be sitting in facilities like this. <laughs> this has been built in less than nine、okay. months, if I remember that correctly, right? This is the speed that I'm,、uh, I'm impressed by in China, right? Okay, yeah. Now, <laughs>、uh, <laughs> now we. So now we have our last、uh, distinguished guest, uh, Chairman uh, Chen. So from uh, Minister Xu, from uh, uh, Governor Zhou. So, can you give us a concrete、uh, case for the industrial capacity、uh, cooperation? You also、uh, go to the U.S. to set up your production base in the U.S. So, my question is that why you did it? So, my initial idea is in the U.S. to set up your、uh, manufacturing base. In theory, maybe、uh, it's easier to do it in China. In terms of the labor force, so、uh, in China it's、uh, cheaper. You set up your manufacturing base in the、uh, U.S. So, what is your、uh, purpose and also target for their marketing or for the American、uh, R&D、uh, capabilities? So, I would like to、uh, hear your introduction. So, first of all, I should say, in two thousand and two. We acquired an American、uh, company, a very famous、uh, American company. We had an acquisition. So during our acquisition, so we add our more、uh, investment. So set up such a local uh, manufacturing uh, enterprise. At that time, so that is the value chain. We see the value chain of the industrial、uh, restructuring. Some of them is、uh, produced in China. And also, the others was produced in America. So, for the enterprises in China, so the international、uh, industrial capacity cooperation. So, we have、uh, gone through、uh, several stages. So, at the very beginning, the first stage. So, our Dalian Machine Two Group, when we、uh, went、uh, global for the overseas acquisition, so with our peers. In Dalian, we set up uh, uh, several joint ventures first. With such acquisition, with a、uh, uh, joint ventures、uh, set up, so our companies acquired a lot of uh, uh, patents in technology. 
and uh, very quickly, we really uh, reduced our gap between China and all those advanced countries. So in this uh, process, so we do have uh, experience of uh, a certain uh, stage. So now it's the second stage. So the second uh, stage with our overseas acquisition and also the uh, joint venture cooperation, try to improve our uh, uh, in-house uh, innovation. We try to uh, introduce and also try to uh, digest those uh, uh, foreign technologies. So our company will uh, fully uh, uh, push forward our technology progress, our management uh, progress, our manufacturing uh, models and the commercial models uh, progress. So when we uh, acquired uh, foreign companies with the worldwide uh, famous uh, companies, our uh, good uh, cooperation experience, we try to uh, spread those uh, experience across our uh, businesses so that we can uh, uh, set up our advantages of our heritage and uh, innovation. So to interrupt you, Mr. Chen, when you set up the manufacturing base, so it dates back to our foreign acquisition. And uh, later, with such a acquired a company, you set up the American base. So when you do the acquisition, such an American company, so is it a machine tool company? Yeah, that is uh, in the machine tool area. So what is your basic ideas? So focus on their technology or their R&D capabilities, so what are your major considerations? So at that time in China, our local manufacturing uh, industry, we have to improve our manufacturing uh, level. So our uh, f uh, traditional product cannot meet that requirement. In order to shorten those uh, uh, distance, so we have to uh, go through this uh, shortcut. The shortcut is uh, acquisition. And also the joint ventures. It's not only the technology progress, Actually, we have acquired very mature and uh, developed the international uh, uh, selling and the marketing. So, so technology is a very important thing. So you have the uh, digital uh, machine tools. So with the acquisition, with the cooperation, so for your own technology in the area of uh, machine tools, so your own products, so it helps you a lot. So for your uh, past few years uh, output, and also at least uh, for greater assistance or not, so that is a great help to improve our own quality of our products. So we have the digital uh, machine tool for the iron steel works and also for the smart manufacturing. We have already mastered all the technologies. So uh, it's uh, attributed to our acquisition and also our cooperation with our foreign partners. So right now, our level of uh, equipment, both in China and around the world, could be accepted by more customers. That means our products have a great potential for development. OK, that's it for the first round and if we have some spare time we will have the Q&A session and give the audience a chance and first of all I have a question to Mr. Xu you have mentioned that the China's economic growth from this point of view if we can maintain 7% of GDP growth. Actually, this is already a huge contribution, edging out the United States as the number one in the world. And uh, the direct investment of China is also number one, larger than the United States. So if we would like to improve the value chain because in the past we were the world factory however 
although we created a lot of jobs, at the same time, it caused us huge problems, such as air pollution and some other aspects. So from the industrial upgrading and also the industry capacity cooperation, as well as the planning, as you just mentioned, what kind of work have we already been doing? Mr. Xu, thank you very much. Capacity cooperation is relatively a new thing. However, we have already got off to a very good start. As you may be familiar with the fact that our State Council has already stipulated a report open to the general public about the capacity cooperation with international partners focusing on 12 priority industries, including steel, mining, building materials, shipping, railway, electricity, etc. All these 12 industries have already been investigated by us together with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs we would like to know what kind of requirements do we have to meet in order to cooperate with international partners. We have conducted the investigations with almost 60 countries. Nowadays, we have already selected major projects, major zones overseas. After the country reports and country investigations, we would like to narrow down to some countries with great willingness to cooperate with China, with great foundation for cooperation, including Asia, Africa, Latin America, and Europe, altogether 15 countries. One country is Kazakhstan. We have investigated this country, and we had altogether 25 early harvest projects with 25 billion USD. And this round, we have altogether 30 billion USD worth of projects, like the petrochemical projects so in Central Asia, we would like to conduct the capacity cooperation. And we are now building the economic corridor between China and Pakistan, including ports, railways, airports, worth of 30 billion USD. The reason why I give you so many examples is that we have already chosen some countries, which is also in line with our principle of one belt, one road. At the same time, we are going to learn from some countries with great manager managerial experiences and also multinationals. Like I mentioned, we had already cooperated with France in nuclear power. Well, actually, we are cooperating with France to build nuclear projects to support the UK, which is a third party market. And we also cooperate with the EU, because in EU, they have two strategies. One is the connectivity, and the other one is the African Union. Because African Union is building airlines, 
and airways, uh, railways, and also ports. And we are cooperating with Tanzania, Ethiopia, and some other Eastern African countries. Apart from this, we are also cooperating with ASEAN countries. These are our neighboring countries. We are also cooperating with Central and Eastern Europe countries and uh, also cooperating with Latin American countries. We have established a batch of funds to support all these cooperations. Thank you very much. OK. Our guest from Russia, in this round of capacity cooperation, do we have some projects cooperating with Russia? Well, yes, uh, Russia has always been our old friend. We have a long history of friendship. And especially in recent years, we have frequent high-level mutual visits and uh, also contract agreed on many things, like what Vice Minister just said. Uh, in Vladivostok, our Vice Premier Wang Yang attended this forum, bringing with him 700 Chinese enterprise and entrepreneurs. So you can see that we are cooperating with Russia not only in the industry of energy, but also aviation industry, nuclear, machine tools, equipment, as well as recently we are cooperating with the high-speed railway from Kazan to Moscow, 700 kilometers. We have already agreed on the preliminary, preliminary items, and also we are going to cooperate on aviation industry. So this is also one of our pillars in terms of the capacity cooperation. So Russia is very important to us. Thank you very much, Mr. Xu. Now we still have a few minutes left, so we are we willing to hear some questions from the audience? Identify yourself first. Thank you. I'm from Tangsen. My name is Liu Liping. I would like to ma ask Mr. Xu. For the capital market, the central government has always prevented the systematic risks. What is systematic risks? How to quantify this? Don't ask any questions unrelated to capacity cooperation. OK, so next, what is the biggest uncertainty and risks in the future for China? As I just mentioned, the fundamentals in China's economy is very good. However, we're faced with huge pressure of downward facing. So one is the overcapacity, as I mentioned, all those capacity are not outdated. They are actually in line with the environmental protection standards. However, it's just over capacity. And second is the growth rate of industries and also investment will decrease because it's related to real economy and uh, also for the past few years we have accumulated some risks and uh, other challenges because of the high speed growth rate in china's economies however we are still confident about china's economy okay I'm from Chaijing Magazine. This is not on purpose. It's our correspondent. Because um, we have a lot of SOE present here, so I would like to know 
when we have the ownership reform, what kind of industries can be open, what kind of industries cannot. And also for Liaoning province SOEs, they have done a lot of work and contributed to China's economy. So what kind of issues do you have? And also what about the reforms in the future? Yes, the SOE reforms have already been started and we will have the documents very soon. And faced with the downward pressure, especially in the first half of this year, we have very fast speed of MA and uh, the increase rate was 16%. And SOE reform in Liaoning province is our priority. And in our province, we have already set out our requirements because the SOEs in Liaoning province has already been there for a long period of time. So it's a little bit difficult for us to do this. We have to research into all those SOEs and then we can know how to go through the reforms. And it's a case by case scenario. And according to the market and efficiency and competitiveness, we have to conduct this. Next. I wish you are not a Jing correspondent. Hello, I'm from Dalian. Um, my name is Xiao Man. Two questions. One is to Mr. Xu, because we are actually for the national new economic zones. For the development of the new economic zones, what kind of priorities do we have to do? And also, what kind of expectations do you have? Well, the national level new economic zone is a very important way for us to nurture the growth point. And, uh, our economic zone has been new, approved by NDRC. And this year, NDRC has already set out requirements for 12 zones nationwide. In terms of the institutional innovation, we have to do something. And also, we have to deepen reforms. In this way, the new economic zones can contribute to the economic growth and also nurture new growth points and uh, new growth polars. No, no second question, only one. Because time is really limited, so we only have 60 minutes. So that's it for, OK, a foreigner. Raise your hand. I'm from South Africa, Nafe. Nafe. Yeah. Um, I wanted to know with the international corporations that uh, uh, China and the developing uh, economies have, uh, in particular with Africa, is it a win-win or it, does it only favor China? You know that it has to, well, inclusive growth, uh, <laughs> job creation, uh, skills transfer. Does it factor in all of that? Or is it replacing uh, China, you know, uh, having a, a place in an in, in African country and not assimilating and integrating? So when uh, China go to uh, Africa, whether it's a zero-sum uh, game, so that means uh, uh, African people uh, lose and uh, Chinese people uh, win. So thank you so much. I know uh, you are from South Africa. I'm so happy. So we have very uh, good uh, uh, cooperation and consensus with South Africa, with uh, Haiyangbu Marine. We have uh, signed a cooperation uh, agreement on the Marine. 
So we also have the second stage uh, construction of uh, iron and steels, about uh, three million or five million tons. And also with South Africa, we're talking about the nuclear power uh, project. So it is said, so by the end of this year, uh, South Africa will hold a China-African uh, uh, summit. So for sure, we'll have somebody there. So as you uh, asked this uh, question, so at the opening remarks, I've already uh, made it very clear for the international industrial capacity and equipment cooperation, our principle is the win-win and also a joint uh, uh, discussion and a joint uh, construction and also uh, sharing the uh, result of this uh, construction. So in this uh, process, we'll uh, give uh, full consideration to the requirement of uh, South Africa. So for example, to use uh, local uh, labor forces to improve the local uh, employment and the local uh, acquisition of your products, and also increase your uh, tax uh, revenue, and also we'll uh, uh, perform our uh, corporate uh, social uh, responsibility to help your development for the local industry and the community. So we have the government uh, policies, and also the uh, enterprise will uh, follow the law and also uh, pay our uh, tax. So that could solve your questions. We all have uh, inclusive uh, growth. It's a win-win. So thank you so much. Now it's time for uh, wrap up. So thank you so much uh, to our distinguished guests. Thank you all. So thank you for coming. <laughs>